Hey guys, I have some exciting news to start off 2019, even though this isn't our first video of this year. I kind of slacked on this announcement. Anyway, due to um, popular demand, we officially have a Patreon page. Uh, this is basically a place where if you want to contribute anything to thank the people or the artists who create content that you enjoy, you can do so. You totally don't have to. We love all of our supporters, whether you're just viewing our videos or if you want to take the extra step to support us on Patreon, it's totally up to you. We're just happy that you like watching our videos. If you want to find us on Patreon, just go to patreon.com or search for Snake Discovery on the Patreon app, and I believe we should pop up. I'm kind of new to the whole Patreon thing, but I'm pretty sure that's what you'd have to do. Anyway, today's subject is kind of a controversial one because it's whether or not you can cohabitate snakes. So basically, if you can keep multiple snakes in the same enclosure. <laughs> The short answer to this question is no, you really shouldn't keep snakes together. The long answer is usually no, but sometimes it's okay. So basically, reptiles, including snakes, are solitary animals for the most part. I mean, you don't look outside the window and see a herd of snakes slithering across a loamy field together. They live alone. They're really the only times they will come across each other or pursue another individual is for breeding purposes. If you or someone you know has a couple of snakes currently housed together and you see them next to each other kind of curled up on, say, the warm end of the enclosure, it's not that they're cuddling. In all actuality, that's just the best location location in the enclosure, so it's where they both happen to want to go. It's the warmest spot, there's usually a cave there, and so they both want to be warm and hidden, and if that means they have to slither around and kind of what looks like cuddle, then that's what they're gonna do. But it's not because they have a bond with each other. In fact, it can cause a lot of issues if you house snakes together that are not supposed to be with each other. They're supposed to be alone. In the wild, snakes have an unlimited amount of space between each other. And when you combine some solitary animals into the same enclosure, that's when things can go seriously wrong. The least of your worries would be if they just become stressed and they don't want to eat and they refuse food. One of the more serious issues is that there's a good chance that one snake will actually eat the other one. If you have multiple male snakes together, then during the breeding season, or not during the breeding season, they might actually fight with one another for dominance. If it's a male and a female and it's breeding season, the male will usually harass the female to the point where she gets so stressed she dies or refuses food, or she may end up breeding prematurely. And if a snake breeds when it's too young, there's all sorts of other problems that can happen. These are just a few of the problems that may occur if you house solitary animals together in the same enclosure, but there's also lots of other issues that can happen too. Now, like I was saying earlier, there are a couple of instances where housing them together is acceptable. One would be when you're trying to breed the snakes. Now, that doesn't mean that you house them together year-round. Usually breeders will just house them together for a period of a couple of days to maybe a week, and then give them a break, and that break can last the rest of the year. Or if they need to repair them, they may put them back together again until they see visual locks between the pair. But for the most part, breeders will keep their snakes separated throughout the entire year, not only for the safety of both snakes, but also to make those individuals more likely to show breeding behavior when they do pair them up for those small periods throughout the year. Another instance in which it would be acceptable to house snakes together is if that species of snake is a very social species and they live in large groups in the wild anyway. One example that comes to mind, which is the biggest example that you see in captivity, would be garter snakes. Garter snakes can be housed together given that they have a large enough enclosure, they have enough hides, and a large basking area so they don't have to compete for the best spot. Garter snakes, unlike many other snakes, actually, in my opinion, seem to do better if they're kept with at least one other garter snake, and you can keep them in groups as long as they're the same sex and roughly the same size because you don't want any accidental breedings or squishing of little ones from bigger ones basking on top of them. Anyway, with my garter snakes, and in my opinion, it's best to house them together with other garter snakes because what, we, what I've found is that they are more calm. It's like they're used to the constant touching to another being, whether it be a human hand holding them or another garter snake touching them. It basically calms them down and makes them more handleable. 
I found that keeping them together also makes them better eaters. I feel it makes them feel more secure. It's kind of the dither effect with fish, if you've ever, ever heard of that. Basically, since there's other snakes around, it must be okay to kind of explore and to eat because these other snakes are safe and so I must be too. This happens a lot with uh, shy species of fish like ram cichlids. They kind of need other fish around them to help them feel more secure. And I think that kind of takes effect in garter snakes as well. I didn't realize how much garter snakes seem to benefit from being cohabbed with other garters until I purchased my first California red-sided garter snake. You may remember the video in which we brought her home from a local pet store or reptile store, but when we first got her, she was wild and she would musk, you couldn't hold her because she would flail and try to get away from you. But after her quarantine, when we put her into the enclosure with the other garters, just a couple of weeks later, she was calmed down dramatically. And I really do think it's because the other garters around her calmed her down. She also became a better eater when she was housed with other garters compared to when she was in quarantine. I have also seen this happen with baby garter snakes. When we have a clutch of baby garters, we will separate them into small groups because they eat a lot better than if they're housed individually. This past summer, we, I can't say hatched, we produced a runt garter snake, and I did house her by herself because I was worried her larger, normal-sized uh, siblings were going to squish her, but she didn't want to eat until I put one of the siblings into her enclosure, and then she started eating just fine. So seeing that difference is what really opened my eyes to the fact that garter snakes do benefit by being cohabbed with other garters. You can also house water snakes together. Not many people keep these, but if you do have them, you can house them together, and although I don't have them personally, I've heard that you can get kind of the same benefits of cohabbing those. And to top it all off, you can house garter snakes with water snakes. They do just fine. I've seen it happen many, many times. They eat just fine. They bask together. They don't mind at all. So those two specific species seem to do really well when they're kept with others, but for the most part, all other species out there are more solitary. Another exception to this rule would be fox snakes. It appears, I mean, not many people have them, so there's still some research to be done to confirm this, but it appears as though fox snakes can also be housed together, and that does, though, depend on your personal preference, and that's kind of your decision to make, because they are a species of rat snake, and rat snakes have huge appetites. So I guess if you want to house fox snakes together, my best recommendation would be to get two that are the same sex unless you are purposely wanting to breed them and have them be around the same size so that there's less of a chance of one eating the other. Make sure they have enough hides, enough of a warm area that they can both comfortably um, sit at to digest their food, as well as, of course, an enclosure that's big enough for the two of them in the first place. But if you want to play it safe, you can house fox snakes separately too. It's not like they need the other individuals around them to feel more secure like garter snakes tend to. One more thing to keep in mind with housing snakes together is that it's best to feed them in a separate enclosure because, you know, when snakes eat they get into food mode and that's when other snakes can potentially be on their menu because snakes, they're cute, but they're not the brightest. So when I feed my garter snakes, I either move them into a separate enclosure or I keep a very, very close eye on them and I am there the entire process in which they are eating and usually I hand feed them all of their food just to make sure that nothing goes awry. I don't think garter snakes get into food mode as heavily as other snakes do, but I keep an eye on them just to play it safe. Before we wrap up this video, I do want to touch on lizards a little bit. Housing lizards together is, well, it really depends on the species. Some species live in groups in the wild, and those are typically okay to house together in captivity, given they have a large enough enclosure to comfortably house them all together. However, there are some species like bearded dragons that are solitary in the wild and they should never be housed together unless it's specifically for breeding purposes temporarily. I have seen so many bearded dragons that have nub tails, they are missing their toes, sometimes their entire foot they're missing just because the other bearded dragon having a strong food feeding response will see the toes as potential food and they bite them off. Male bearded dragons are also very aggressive during breeding season and they will physically fight. So bearded dragons should be housed separately. Leopard geckos, on the other hand, are very controversial. For the most part, well, most people will tell you that leopard geckos should be housed individually. And honestly, that is the safest route to go if you want to make sure that your lizard's going to be safe and it'll be fine and it'll feel secure and not stressed. There are, however, some people who can successfully house females together. That's because in the wild, females form kind of a dominance hierarchy where there is one dominant female and the rest are submissive to her. So in captivity, 
The only way it would work is if you had multiple leopard geckos together that were for sure females, and you had one dominant female and the other one or other two were okay with her being the dominant one, that's when it can sometimes work to cohab leopard geckos. But more often than not, you put two dominant females together and of course they're gonna fight. And finally, since we're gonna keep going from solitary to maybe cohab's okay to cohabbing is totally fine, on this end of the spectrum, like false chameleons or green anoles, they're usually just fine being housed with others. They have no dominance hierarchy or they have no aggression towards each other. Usually with males, you'll get head bobbing or you might see some uh, aggression between males. But as long as you have one male and multiple females or all girls, you're usually fine with uh, quite a few other species like those green anoles, brown anoles, uh, false chameleons, and some others too. But obviously with over 4,000 species of lizards, there's no like grouping them into one category or another when it comes to cohabbing. There's so much variance between each species, so it's best to know the natural history and behavior of the individual species that you are considering housing with another. Basically, it all boils down to do your research and know how it acts in the wild so you can best replicate that in captivity. I hope today's video kind of opened your eyes to the whole subject of cohabbing reptiles together and when it's okay and when it is not okay. For the most part, it's not okay. This is, by the way, a tricolor hog nose in case anybody was wondering. I just needed to have a snake. Uh, to hold during recording. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.